Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls, every game, every week. Well, hello again and welcome to We're Going Down the Pub What's with that? me, Frank Williams. And of course, you know who's here with me. It's the indomitable Mr. Simon Wright. Couldn't get anybody else again, so Absolutely. you stuck with me once more. Absolutely, yeah. despite, <laughs> despite adverts. <laughs> we could, we're, not, we're not looking at... We looked last week at five new players. Yep. T- uh, tonight we're going to look at pre-season, mm. pre-season part one, pre-season the away on the road. matches. Mm. Yeah, the away matches because there are five of them. Indeed. Um, Indeed. We're going to have to yeah. do five themes every week from well, now uh, on. Well, uh, we? it could be difficult. <laughs> Not five grounds every week. But I do want to say a few things first. Uh, some people have contacted me during this week and say, why don't we put this out live on Radio Hereford FC? Well, the problem with that is that would be fine. We could do it. It's not a problem. We could do it. But a lot of people. Um, have got other commitments at times. We'd have to keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, which will get in the way of our brilliant music content, which people do tune oh. in and listen to while they're at work. Um, so we record these and we put them out on three different platforms. We put them out on the club's audio boom site, which you can get out via the main club website. Mm-hmm. We put them out on our own Going Down the Pub YouTube channel, which you can access, if you don't know where it is, just go onto our Facebook page, Radio Heaven FC Facebook page, find the YouTube link, click on that, and all our podcasts are there. But if you want to download it onto your mobile phone or your tablet or any other device, we also have a Cherbit channel. Now, yes, a Cherbit channel. I have a Cherbit channel, and you you can actually download from Cherbit. You just click on the download button, it'll just download it to your device. If you want to find that, I've made it easy for you. It is the pinned post at the top of the Radio Hereford FC Facebook page. Has got all our podcasts there. You just click on the link, and you'll see uh, a bar with it, the, the, the play bar, and underneath it, a little button that says download. Click on that, and it'll download it to your phone or to your tablet so you've got it for posterity and you can keep playing it to all your friends exactly. over and over posterity, again posterity which has got something to do with the back side of something yeah. isn't it? which is probably the best <laughs> best place but they're all there going right back to our first ever Wembley edition oh no, are they really Last goodness year. me yeah which is getting on a bit now but uh, there anyway mm. we're going to start off by yes. looking at the first um, of our it's it's getting close. Close which is the 11th of July, Tuesday the 11th of July, 7.45 p.m. kickoff at AFC Wolfrinians, who we visited Christmas time in our first season. Uh, Yeah, so tell us a little bit the ground. Yeah, um, well, I suppose we ought to say, first of all, it's not the ideal opener to pull in big travelling support, but... The ground is 53 miles from Edgar Street. I mean, you and I laugh at 53 miles, don't we? That's a stroll in the park. That's a home game for us. But it's very easy by and train. And it's very... Yes. It's but, very easy by train. Well, yeah. Ish. Ooh, well, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say go by train there, but you can get there without going on the motorway or going into Wolverhampton. It's always a good idea not yeah. to go into Wolverhampton if you possibly help it. Um... So we're not really, because it's only 53 miles, same as the home game, we're not going to be that sympathetic to people who tell us, tell us it's too far. You know, think of us exiles. Uh, yeah. Um, as we know, for people who went that Christmas occasion, it's got a, a big modern car park, probably roof of 200 cars, which I'd imagine will, will be enough. But if you are a bit late and it's full, you people park alongside the approach lane or on the housing estate opposite. You, you know, you... There are room for hundreds of cars within five minutes' walk, so that's not going to be an issue. And again, as we, as probably people remember, all the facilities are concentrated in one stand. But what a jolly decent Impressive. stand it is! It is. Mm. Yeah. Wouldn't be out of place, place in the football no, league. In the football yep. league definitely. Yeah. I will say one thing: uh, about this will not happen for this game. Okay. But for you, you didn't go to the away game there. I you? didn't go to that game. No. It's too near Wolverhampton for you, isn't it, basically? <laughs> Worrying. 
worryingly near to Wolverhampton. Far too many dingles. What they did, because they've got the gymnasium at one end of the stand underneath, they stripped it out and put a bar in just for Hereford fans. Brilliant. Now, they're not going to do that for pre-season no, friendly. No. But the, the, uh, I'm sure they will put some sort of bar, however, downstairs, because the main bar is, in fact, upstairs. It's yeah. a bit like... The stand is a bit like Salisbury in that the bar is upstairs and from the yeah. bar yeah. you can get to the seated area. So, you know, Ooh, watch out. But it's summertime. It's Indeed. July. It's, it's early outside, July. Yeah. You know, season starts earlier every year. Yeah. I'll imagine they'll put some some sort of tent oh, bars outside, oh, or so. or maybe it, it, you know maybe they won't clear all the all the cycle machines and treadmills out of the gym, <laughs> but they may still operate. But it's yeah. a lovely bar that they operated for oh, us. Dear. Yeah. Yeah, I just vaguely think, you know, you can combine a gym and a pub together, you know. You, you get a free pint if you do ten minutes on the treadmill or something like that, you know. Well, actually, visiting some of these clubs is like going on a treadmill, isn't it? <laughs> you know, week after week, the old treadmill. Yeah. Around and around. Well, let me just throw a few details about um, the home host club. AFC Warfurians, or AFC Dingles, as I turn, tend to call them, lease Castlecroft. They don't own it, they lease it. Newish club, they've only been going... 12 years now. Right, can I stop you there? If you Why must. the Dingles? Well, Dingles, as people who watch soap operas may know, uh, is a dysfunctional family in Emmerdale. Very dysfunctional. Very yeah. dysfunctional. And there's hundreds of them. There is. Yeah. There is. Every um, other cast member yeah. is a Dingle. Yeah. So, what's the connection? I think you can just spot the ha, spot the reality. Yeah. Okay. Re- Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Because they're dysfunctional. Well, absolutely. Uh, does, are they dysfunctional or is it their support? I think it's both. I think they, they, they set each other off. You know, they're like a modern day version of the Adams family. But, uh, Fortunately, we're sitting here in the wagon and horses in Hale Zoe, yeah. where there are some. Dingle supporters in the Hale Zoe area. It's not a strong thing. Dingle but area. Thankfully. it is. West Brom. It's an Albion area. It's an Albion area. Okay, bit of villa. Yeah, too bit much. Too much of that one, but far too much. Very unhealthy. But very few blues fans around this area. They yeah. tend to be situated more in the Spark Hill, Stetford. Yeah, yeah and south. That. South Birmingham. <laughs> Solly yeah. Hill. Yeah. Few of yeah. them, isn't it? But anyway, there you go. Anyway, so we've got... AFC Warfurians, yeah, yeah. Frankly, they had a rotten season last year. They only just stayed up in step five. Now that surprises me because they were they they were mm. one of our better opponents in the year the year before. They were, weren't they? Yeah. They were. Yeah. And I, I I took in a game against Sporting House uh, I think in January this year. And the Wolfies they looked like a team of naive kids and they pretty much gave up as soon as they conceded a goal. They just I said just about stayed at Warsaw Wood took the, took the drop by a couple of points. Yeah, that was surprising, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. But you know what it's like at that level. Manager goes and half the team goes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um Because Warsaw Wood again we, we thought, yeah. Yeah. Comfortable mid table, you would have thought. Yeah. Would have thought. thought but things can change so very, very quickly in the Look league. at Tividale, for example. Oh they can't go down fast well, enough, can well, they? Well no, they went they went mm. up to um, uh, uh, Northern Premier... Yeah, Northern Premier, Premier League, South. Yeah. South step and forward, then yeah. all their players and their manager left. Yep, yes. And who was their manager? Ian Long. Oh, and all their players him, and went to Old Church. Yeah, yeah. yeah? The, the, the beginning of the season that, that we entered the league. Right. And of course, right. they stayed with them. Yep. Tividale, in the meantime, have been relegated twice in two seasons. They can't, they can't drop fast enough. Because when, when so managers leave mm. clubs or move clubs they yeah. tend to take half their previous club with them yep sad but true sad Indeed. but true well castlecroft used to be the training ground of a uh, or basically a struggling championship side the dingles yeah the yeah. dingles and lingering traces of their legacy can be found if you look hard enough you know sort of bones and bits of concrete that sort of thing you know <laughs> bones <laughs> well, you know, and strange odd, things goes on there. The odd black and gold, I would imagine, it will be. Oh, there will, there will. Yeah. There'll be pictures and scars and all sorts. That's very much the cross to bear bit, particularly for me. Um, but I suppose the positive, really, after all those years of manure, 
It, it does wonderful things to the pitch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And you could have said something then that would not have got past the censors. Oh, censors this not, time. oh we know yeah. our censor is. But, yeah. And all those years of manure makes for a decent pitch, and I guess that's why Bees wanted to go I there. I think we're going because they were a top-class bunch of blokes, and, and, and right. the, the, the hospitality there was mm. absolutely mm. first-rate. It then, really was. It was a pleasure to go to. Um, and it will be, I'm sure yeah, it will be it will. again. It will. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, particularly because it's the first match. Yeah. And we're going to be seeing local new players yep. and old players playing together for the first time. It's going yep. to be, you know, the, the, the beginning of a, a long oh, pre-season gosh. process of getting them to gel. Ah, a pack of forwards, you're pushing and jostling to get on that pitch, aren't they? There's enough of them. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. Um, just a, a tip, if you are early, and probably the ground isn't going to open that early. Try the Furs on the main Castlecroft road. That's towards the city, about a mile away. It's a very large Banks's house, very big on food, and they've got a couple of guest beers, which is sort of drinkable. Yeah. Now, a lot of you who live down in the Shire will think Banks's. oh, well, Banks's bitter. Yeah, it's all right, you get occasionally. What you want to look for, if you can find it, because you only really get it around the black country, oh. is the Banks's mild. Banks's mild. Or even oh, better, down, or right? even better, they brew as well, is the Highgate mild. Oh, that is can you still get that? Oh, yes. Yep. It's exceptional. And in the big Banks's houses like this, you're more likely to find it. Mm, there you go. So we'll see you in hot. about three o'clock in the afternoon, mate, for a seven forty-five. There's a hot hint, yeah, yeah. hot hint. Okay, um, and that's, we, that's the first on the yep. Castlecroft Road yep. towards the city, city. about a mile yep. from the ground. Yeah, but we all we ought to say, you know, sort of word of caution. If this is the first friendly, it's a pre-friendly friendly, if you like. Yeah, so, they don't. This is a friendly yeah. one. They they, they yeah. get a bit unfriendly later. They on. do, they yeah. do. So I mean, let's not expect the earth. Yeah. Uh, for f- players and fans, it's just a first step to w- w- walking, working, working together. Can yep. you really get me to yep. your teeth together? And um, it is just 53 miles strolling in the park, but if yep. you really can't make it, Radio Hereford will be covering the game. In fact, last season, the only pre season match that we covered on Radio Hereford FC was the FC United and Manchester mm. game. That was the only one. Oh, and the uh, Kid against the Harriers game. This year we are covering them all, oh my word. one way or another. It might be yeah. you and me on some occasion. Oh, Maybe right, we are, okay. We are covering them all, mm-hmm. definitely. Well, okay. Fantastic, there so you go. That's, that's the first one out of the way. That was that's AFC or Frunians on Tuesday, July the 11th. Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls. Every game every week okay now we go on to look at a good neighbor game yeah against wellington on saturday july the 15th second of our prison game so really local one Familiar haunt, but not for you. No, I feel a bit of a fraud talking about this one, Frank. What do you mean you feel a bit of a fraud talking about this one? (laughs) Well, I'm... Okay, okay, I'm a fraud most of the time, but I have been to these places. Yes, you have. I'm one of the few regulars never to have seen Hereford play at Peggy. At Wellington. Sorry, Wellington, yeah, yeah. yeah, But you've been to the ground. I've been to the ground about half a dozen... So who, how do you see them play against? Oh my word! Um, a selection of um, step five opponents, most of which have faded away. Um, right, but they are step five. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's West Midlands yeah. Premier. West Midlands Premier. West Midlands Premier. Yeah. West Midlands Premier. In fact, along with Peggy. Yep. Yeah, along with Peggy and now Lads, Lads Club, Club as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they had a decent season last year. Yeah. Um, so it's the step five or step six, step six, it's step, six. step yeah, six. Step six. We're not doing very well between yeah. us, are we? Yeah. They had a decent. What's all these steps. I'm oh, it's yeah, steps. no, no, yeah. taking yeah. steps. And what, they what steps are you going to take? Oh, let's put this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, okay. Great big ones. I let's say. have another go. Of putting this right then. Okay. okay. They had a decent season last year yep. in step six. And they finished fifth. Right. With Sixty-eight yeah. points, which yeah. sounds pretty reasonable. They were a mere 31 points behind the right. champions, which is a massive difference. Now, who were the champions? Hoffman's. Right, who we... Omen's, yeah. Omen, who Omen's, we played yeah. in the yeah. bars yeah. previously. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were, I saw Omen's in one token game, I think, in March. And They're very, Telford very, side, aren't they? Yes, yeah, Shropshire, yeah. Telford, very, yeah. very organised, picking yeah. at the back. Yeah. And some... They have small 
uh, forwards who like to play, play the ball, which is quite unusual yeah. for step So they will have gone up into yeah. the Midland? Yeah, they will have gone to step five. Yeah, they'll be very, yeah. they'll be yeah. very um, yeah. stuck out in, on an edge of that league. Yeah, they? they will, they will. Yeah. Um, you know, the well is... Uh, I mean, they're, they're only village. And you mean Holman will be in the same league next year as Worcester City? That's a thought, isn't it? What a thought. That oh, is. dear. We were talking yeah. the, the, the other night at a, at a Hust meeting. I was talking to Richard Tompkins about, about where we are and where we were two years ago mm. when we were with, without a club, without a home, without a ground, without, without anything. And the two other big cities in the three counties, that's Worcester City and Gloucester, um, were both nomadic themselves at the time, but they were, they were there they were ensconced in the northern, um, sorry, in Conference, uh, in Conference North, uh, doing quite well, and how things can change, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Worc yeah. At the time, Worcester was three divisions above us. <laughs> they start this season yeah. two divisions below, below us, us. Yeah. in the space of just over, just about two years. I mean, yeah, what it's a right. and, and both those clubs are homeless. Mm. They don't play at their ground. We'll find out. Uh, we'll talk about Gloucester on. a bit later yeah, on. Yeah, Worcester is we? ground sharing with Bromsgrove. Yeah. Uh, actually, league sharing with Bromsgrove as well. Oh, yes. So they're in the same. Yes. Because Bromsgrove have been promoted from Division yes. 1. Bromsgrove are... And Worcester have been relegated two divisions. Yeah. Not at their own request. They just wanted to drop down one. But of course, if the, because they were actually relegated mm. and they are requested to drop down one, they've been dropped down two. So, you know, things have changed yeah. dramatically. Yeah, oh, I mean, you, you do, do fear for Worcester. I just can't yeah. see where they're going. Yeah, that's right. But there the thing go. that has made, uh, given us the impetus is they Edgar Street, of without a doubt. I, I mean, I remember Chris Williams saying in an interview with Keith that it's our, um, our biggest asset mm. and our biggest liability because of the money we need to spend on yeah. it all the time. As has been proved this year with all the work we're having to do on toilet blocks and so couldn't on. Couldn't be without it though, could we? No, but we so couldn't. I, okay. I, I'd give that any day of the week, you mm. know, the, the situation that Worcester and Gloucester mm. find themselves in. Yeah. Um, it, a club yeah. cannot be sustainable. Yeah. No. We can no. attract no. our no. support base because we we have a home. We've got a home and yeah. we've got history. And a proper home. Yep. And we are so, so, so lucky, all you people out there. Don't forget it. When you're going on about, oh, this should be happening, that should be happening. Just think great how you lucky got. we yeah. are. Yeah. Anyway, back to well, Wellington. Wellington, yeah, I remember yeah. them. This is my wife. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, they are famed, in my humble opinion, for the most excellent sausage rolls. If there's any going, grab them. Really? Because they are really... Yes, but they are infamous yeah. for something else. Yeah, it's a dry ground. Not only is it a dry ground, yeah. the village pub has also closed. It's a dry yeah. village. Going to be drinking a lot of tea. <laughs> or how do you like it? How far it, out of town is it? You know, it's, mm. it's what eight miles, eight nine miles. Well, you'd out walk of it, wouldn't you? <laughs> the A49. <laughs> That's a good point. That's yeah. Good point. Yeah. So yes. So anyway, what we've got to say? Well done, the Wellies. It's a village. They put they put together a very decent football club. Yeah. Lots of kids teams, and they do so much work in the community. And, you know, good good for them. You know, there's other things. One of the reasons why football clubs exist other than just to win trophies, and what Wellington are a really good example of that. Um, it's a Saturday, it's local, yeah. and I think if our supporters go to only one away game, pretty much that's going to be it. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, for our Radio Harry for Guru Keith, yeah. it's, it's going to be like broadcasting from his living room then, for it, isn't it? Then you ought to check. Yeah, check, check his feet. Yeah. yeah. Is he wearing slippers? Exactly, yes. Uh, <laughs> and has he got a cloth cap? I can lend him a cloth cap, as you oh, all know. Oh, I can imagine lend him a cloth And a pipe. He needs a cloth cap and yeah. a pipe. But we, we, we think, with kids I've discussed this, we don't think uh, that there's going to be mains electricity available to us in the main stand. So he might have to take our big battery pack called right. The Beast. We have two of them. Well, we have three now. We have two big battery packs called the Beast, and of course we have Mark Simmons as well. <laughs> Good help. Okay, so that's that's, that's Wellington yeah. on Saturday, July the fifteenth, kick off three p.m. Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls every game, every week. 
Okay, now match number three in a guide for uh, pre-season is Bishop's Cleave on Tuesday, July the 18th, and that's going to be a 7.45 kickoff. Another short journey, though. They're all short, decent yeah, yeah, short yeah. journeys, yeah, aren't they? Edge of Cheltenham, basically. Easy, yeah. Pretty easy to get to. Yeah, another night game, so we're going to miss out on the delights of the village once more. Well, yeah, I did feel sorry for you, because the the, the last one was the Boxing Day game, which actually wasn't on Boxing Day, it was the day after yeah. Boxing Day. One of the two away games last season that I missed, oh. unfortunately, um, because I was away. But we're going to miss out on the delights again, because you did this wonderful... You this wonderful guide of where to visit, yeah. what to see, yeah. where to drink, whatever, yeah. and they were all closed. They were all closed, and they knew we were coming. Yeah. That's probably why. It could be. No, no. Could they be, missed out on opportunities. They did. There, didn't they? I mean, I would have liked the chance to visit Larry's Espresso Bar and Chocolatier once more. Oh, that was the one that your missus was colouring in. Yeah, colouring books. Yeah, adult colouring books. Free, free to all customers. Uh, when you say adult colouring books, no. is that adult colouring books or is it adult in inverted commas <laughs> colouring books? Are you colouring in? It'd be in more fun if it's adult, adult inverted yeah, commas, exactly. but sadly it, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah. I have, I have <laughs> visions of colouring in, or just flesh, basically oh. colouring in flesh, oh, because that's all that's available. Okay. 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 Right. Well, one obvious recent link. It's one of James Bowen's previous clubs. Indeed. Yeah. And I've looked, researched that slightly in more detail, yeah. and it was a youth loan. So, oh, they, right. so was, it, it, yeah. yeah, so when he was uh, an apprentice rather than yeah. a pro, but there yeah. you go. And uh, it's also another chance to admire the, uh, the septic tank, which isn't really a septic tank, which is uh, situated behind the clubhouse. Yes, we do think it's gas, actually, isn't it? Oil, oil. I think we went for oil in yeah. the end, but yeah. we... Septic tanks yeah. far more. Is amusing. this the, also the club that uh, that uh, has um, the, the solar panels? It's got sixty solar panels. I was sad enough to count them last time. Yeah. yeah. So we we, uh, we said last time. I think we are hoping for a good day. So yeah. the floodlights last at least <laughs> to the end of the game, <laughs> if not for Keith to pack away all his gear afterwards. Exactly. Oh yeah. yes, yes, right. yes. That was another lasting memory. The last time I was there, ca- trying to carry Keith's massive uh, baggage and failing dismally. <laughs> But there you go, and uh, of course, no police horses this time. Um, we Hang on a minute. Yeah. Why were you commandeered to carry it? I'll tell you why. Because yeah. I wasn't there. Probably yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. And uh, Keith has been caught short, so we had to dash off apparently. So. Yeah, but at least he didn't get you to drive to Swindon. And uh, thanks. <laughs> oh dear. Don't well, that's another. Me. That's another story. Yeah. And I intend to make that public in the next <laughs> issue of Talking Ball. Oh, what a spendy one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, okay, it's. It, Again, we're not really sure why this venue, other than presumably geographical reasons. There's something of a trend. There's always a Gloucestershire game in our friendly schedule. So I guess it's just handy for a beat and a lot of our players who live in in the area. Yes, also, I think, in terms of standard of opposition, we're gradually building up here. Yeah, yeah. Aren't we, really? Because uh, Wolfrinians are slight... Well, Wellington are probably pretty close, really, aren't they? One's the top of step six, one's the bottom of step five. And now we're definitely moving up with Bishop's Cleave, uh, who had quite a decent season in, in a lot of respects last season. We're moving up now to look at a, a team that we played against last year, mm-hmm. so we'll be able to measure our progress yes, against last yeah. year. So I can, see yeah. the, uh, I can see the point of that. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a few Gloucestershire grounds to choose from, of course. Um, the pitch wasn't great for when we played Cleave last time, so... Hopefully but it was, right. it was middle of winter. It was, we would yeah. hope. Sure. We would sure. hope. Mind you, <laughs> one of the best grounds we went to the year before uh, in the middle of winter was Highgate, but at the beginning of the season it was dreadful oh. when we went. So, uh, we'll see. Anyway. We'll, see. We'll, well, see. we'll go and yeah. see. I, I think one factor might be that Cleve have regular experience of bigger crowds. Yeah. Not their own crowds, but they do take on Cheltenham every year. Yeah. And I went to the game against Cheltenham last year and they had 700, so the, and it was fine, you know. And I they, I don't like the fact it's in Kate Lane, because that's almost Keat Lane, isn't oh, it? Oh, Lord, it is, isn't it? What a yeah. thought. Yeah. Um, and Cheltenham do play at that certain location three days before we do. So they're probably right. worn out, having chased them all over the pitch and yeah. failed to keep up right. with them. Um, I mean, you know, nearly everybody's 
thousand plus supporters have been there, so it's pretty familiar stuff. There's low stands on either side of the ground, and some very solid concrete walls. Um, always best to expect wind here. Yes, it is a bit open, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the uh, flat, flat countryside. It's either the flat countryside or the catering. One way or another, there's going to be <laughs> a, an amount of wind. It's the time here. of year for cucumber sandwiches, I oh, suppose. It's so you can expect that. Yes. And of course, the stand is called the Thai stand. Yes, T A I. I presume that's a sponsor of some kind. It's not, not, not a traditional Gloucestershire it's not, it's name. It's not a local restaurant, is it? No, no. Um, Clubhouse, we mentioned the solar panels, it's quite smart. Bar's bigger than most, and it's got tables indoors and outdoors, which we hope we can use in the middle of July. Um, fairly moribund selection, though. Guinness, Carlsberg, Old English, and Worthington's, all in plastic glasses, although. If you ask nicely, they do often have a range of bottle beers that you might be able to tap into. Yeah, yeah good, good. Um, car park is not a problem. You can park around two sides of the ground. And uh, it's always been free when we've been there, so that's not a problem. Um, again, hot tip. Um, it is an, the ground is isolated on the edge of the village. Nearest pubs are in the town centre about a mile away, maybe less than a mile. I've been pulled up. People telling me it's not a mile, so there you go. Work it out yourself. Suggest the King's Head is probably the nearest pub. It's around the well, hang on. You have, yeah. to be, you have to be precise about these things, because when we went to Taunton, <laughs> when we went to Taunton, you were yeah. very precise with your distances between pub and ground. Yeah. But then you were precise in the fact you said it's exactly a nine-minute walk. <laughs> Yeah, is that a measure of distance? Is that, that in your terms, is a measure of distance? It is. How it far is. is a pub from the ground? It's a nine minute walk yeah. to get there. 15 minutes getting back with a skin <laughs> fork, nine minutes to get there. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Sort yeah. that one out then, okay. We like the King's Head. A lot of Harry's supporters liked it last time. Good, good. They've got four regular beers. Yeah. They've got Fuller's London Pride. Yeah. Heavy one. Purity Mad Goose. Very nice. Back, indeed. Mm. Uh, Timmy Taylor Landlord. Very nice. Okay, and there is a fourth, but we won't mention the fourth. Uh, there must be Doombar then. It's Doombar. Ah, yeah. Right. yeah, okay. Yeah. We're, uh, we're not going to avoid Doombar again this year. I mean, if you oh, heard our podcast everywhere. last year, yeah. probably on about 25 out of the 30 podcasts, Doombar was available. It features. And, and I think you described it as it's, it's attacking the South like a rash, isn't it, really? And you don't like it. Uh, it's a heavy beer. I don't like it. Omnipresent. I don't like it. But it is technically a real ale, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of people do like that. Sort of yeah. I, I'm like, I like what we're drinking now. Like the BFG, the and the BFG. nice and light topic, yeah. particularly in the summer. Doombar is a winter drink, yeah. and the football season is a winter sport. Yeah. So tough. So, okay. Right. We have a discussion all the time. Yeah. Okay. But Fuller's Land and Pride, yeah. Purity Mad Goose, yes. Timothy Taylor Landlord and Dubai, Plus I think a really good Indeed. cross section Indeed. of ales. Plus two guest beers. Excellent. Um, sadly, they don't seem to food, serve food in the evening. Who wants food in the evening when you've got those four? <laughs> <laughs> and the food and lunch, food lunch time is excellent, so it's unfortunate they don't do it in the evening. Yeah. But there you go. That's the King's Come and Head, join us. just around the corner from Tesco's. Um, in the edge of the urbanised village of Bishop's Cleeve. And that match is taking place on Tuesday, July the 18th, kick-off, 7.45. Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls, every game, every week. Okay, before we look at Telford, I just want to say a few things about uh, the previous one we've done. Reg is running away days to all the away fixtures, obviously apart from uh, Wellington, I wouldn't imagine running with that. The details for the Wolfronians trip are already up on the Hereford Away Days That's Facebook splendid. page. Presumably they don't intend to break down this time. Pardon? They don't intend to break down this no, time. No, 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 no. And no. the last time, but there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Telford. Yeah, good news. Yeah. Saturday, July the twenty-second. Yeah. I'm in Telford. No, this is the first of what you've got to call the big one. It's a serious really. game. It's a isn't serious it? game. And it's also a novelty as well. We, it's been a while since we played played at this ground. Well, a lot of years have gone by, and a lot of water under the bridge, frankly, one way or another. Well, it's not that many years have gone by, but a lot of water's gone by. Yeah, it has, yeah it has. A lot of changes for both there. for both clubs, really. Yeah. Now. Um, I've got to say, Telford, from my point of view, is, you know, we've been there, 
Well, I think they're on their way there again if we're not careful. Mm. Um, there, yeah. We could say there, but by the grace of God, we mm. went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell us a bit about them then. Yeah, um, well, in pure status terms, of course, they are step two National League North. They did enough to stay up. They got 42 points. They managed to get seven points more than Paul Worcester did, who went down. They are an established step two outfit. And of course we're new to step three, so this is, as we said, it's a serious well, challenge for us. They were a very well established step one outfit at one stage. They were. I think that's the last time we played yep. them, was uh, in the conference yep. years. Yeah, I think that was I certainly well. remember us playing at, remember us playing at Telford, mm. certainly, um, you know. When the ground, the new ground was being, re- the ground was being rebuilt, I think. Well, I don't know, that's, 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 well, yeah. you have been, not been there yeah. for a long time then, yeah. it's a lovely little ground, but anyway. Yeah. It is. Um, one slightly alarming note for us, really. Telford were fan own, owned by fans until October last year, and they've changed the structure to attract a wealthy buyer in order to compete. Oh dear, yeah. I mean, that's easy to say from a distance, we know that, but they've had a wealthy backer before and they ended up broke. Um, you know, there's a lot of wealthy backers around where you end up broke, unfortunately. And recently they were in negotiations with an Irishman um, that pulled out because he could not provide proof of funds. Uh, probably just because he was Irish, I presume. Well, yeah, uh, have you yeah. ever met an Irishman who could uh, give proof you proof of funds? Of funds? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I can hear alarm bells. Well, I, you know. I, I certainly can, and, yeah. I, and I have to say, you know, there are... <laughs> You don't have to look very far, do you? No, we no. don't have to look very far no. to see where this is going. But the interesting thing about it is they were fan-owned. Yes. But changed the structure changed, to yeah. attract a wealthy buyer in order to compete. Mm-hmm. So they obviously don't think that as a fan-owned club they can compete at step two. Now, at the present moment in time, we are not a fan-owned club. But we are... We are a club that is owned by fans. Yeah. yeah as uh, John Hell always used to say, no, we're not a fan-owned club, but we are a club owned by fans. And that's the important thing. Yeah. Local it doesn't people. matter who the backer is, as long as they're f- proper fans of the club. Yeah, drag somebody in from across the Irish Sea and say, yeah, yeah give us some money. There's no guarantee. In 12 months, you won't walk away exactly. or become bankrupt. Exactly. Um, anyway, yes, of that. there you go. Yes, enough of that damn big stuff. Um, Any links to us? Well, not many. The only one I could find was Dan Preston, who you may remember was a Hereford squad player a few years back. Yeah, yeah. He is or was a Telford player, though he spent half of last season on loan to Stourbridge. So, yeah. Yeah. who knows? Where he's going to be come uh, Oh, you come might July. find out when we place the average. Well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I see they've made a load of signings this week. They so, uh, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, right, the yeah, ground. Decent ground. It uh, is, it's a lovely ground. It I is. I mean, it is a football league ground. It's, oh, uh, yeah. it's okay. Let's say Forest Green plus a bit. Yeah. Because it's got four sides to start with. It has. And, um, you know, the main stand alone's got a capacity of 2,200. Yeah. Um, called the Sir Stephen Robert Stand, named after former director. Covered terraces, both uh, both ends, semicircular roofs. Yeah. Uh, remaining side of the ground, open terrace, called the Jack Bentley Terrace, after the club's all-time records goal scorer. Now, I bet you remember him playing, don't you, Frank? Uh, in a word, no. <laughs> Jack Bentley. Jack when, Bentley. When was that? In the fifties. Oh, what? Chelsea. Right. Uh, when Chelsea won the league in the mid fifties, Jack the Bentley was their man. Well, mid fifties, I was four. Right. right. What, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Why don't you remember these things? But well, does he remember me? <laughs> more recently, more recently, I think it was around seventy, around seventy seventy one. I remember Telford, including uh, Jack Bentley, come to Hereford and. Um, they scored a lot of goals and some won 4 1 at Edgar Street. And the evening uh, mail, or well, evening news, sorry, headline something like, uh, You don't need a Rolls Royce when you've got a Bentley. Oh dear. I know, I know. Oh dear. I know. So for some reason, that's Please stuck in my note head. if you're listening, Paul yeah. Rogers. If you can come up with something better than that, you're my man. I, you haven't yet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, so you don't remember him then? Fair enough. It's because you're four years No, but I remember us playing. 
in Wellington Town. Oh my word, right. Which is what they were before yes. they became Telford United. This is true. This is yeah. true. Yep, yeah. I'll give you that one. Yeah. I'll give you that one, mate. Now, hopefully... Yeah, I saw us play well in the town, so, yeah. Oh, my word. Sign of the times. Well, you will have remembered that. You're not that old. Um, I'm aware of Wellington. I never saw it. I played Egg Street. Right, okay. The first game was 1970. Okay. So, I know, Johnny come lately, yeah. Right. Hopefully, there won't be any this nonsense of segregation. Yeah. Hopefully, there won't. But if there is, we'll probably get stuck on the Frank Nag Stand. Oh. I, I, I'm sorry, I'll get fed up with this. We've got the Stephen Roberts stand, yeah. we've got the Jack Bentley Terrace, yeah. and we've got the Frank Naddington stand. Yeah. Right? All named after dead people, presumably. Yeah, yeah I guess right? so. I, guess so. Yeah. I think um, we ought to start that. Well, we have. We've got the Len Weston. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not very it's yeah. Really dead. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's a whole. Perhaps we ought to rename good. the Meadow End the Billy Meadow End. The Billy yeah. Meadow yeah. End. Yeah. Lord, yeah. you completely put me off my stroke now, eh? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not coming up with all these things. You are. Mm. Mm. I need to try the BFG. Okay, yes. um, car parking is very good tonight. It's in good it's form, excellent. isn't it? Yeah. Car parking is fine. Club has a small car park, but um, just down the road is. Telford College, um, T, uh, Telford College, like Tea Cut or some strange name like that, aren't they? But uh, but anyway, they've got a seriously big car park, room for a thousand cars, so going to be plenty of room. Right. Um, in terms of refreshments, there is a bar within the uh, Jack Bentley Terrace. They don't normally let away supporters in. And it's small, and we don't do small, do we? Let's be honest. The hotel next door, there's a hotel, the hotel built into the ground. The hotel has a bar, but you really want to be paying their prices? Probably no. not, no. 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 Hot tip five minutes away in Hollyhead Road are two hot stories the Cock Hotel and the Swan Hotel. Right. Now, of the two, both got charms. The Cock Hotel is a standout, it's a regular in the Good Beer Guide. Eight hand pumps, one of which is normally given over to side. And I've got right. a list here. Right, okay. What they got on. Hobson's Bitter. That's from Cleebury Mortimer. Mm. Hobson's. Hobson's Mild. Yep. Green Duck Blonde. Right. No idea, but it sounds interesting. Right. Ludlow Blonde. Uh, yeah, I, I, knew, I know her. <laughs> well, I did years ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Beowulf Chase Buster. I think I knew him as well. Yeah. <laughs> The Shropshire Legends Ravens Bowl. Sounds like an award, but there you go. Clun Citadel. And Adra Falls Thundering Molly Cider. <laughs> now, there must be something in that lock that you Well, why go anywhere yeah, else? I exactly. would say that would yep. be uh, there's yep. something there. They're going and to this be... is a 3 pm kickoff, so exactly. I would say get yeah. there about um, 9 30, lads. Exactly, it's going to be a garden, so the weather's absolutely. kind. Let's get out there. Yes. The Swan Hotel next across the road, if you want an alternative, it's got a beer garden and a car if you've got food. Oh, yeah. And they do Belgian beers, so right. that's your okay. bag. Yeah. Give it a go. And, you know, Telford's no great distance. 54 miles down the A49 and you're there. No, you see, uh, I can see why you've got this thing against Wolfronians. Because with your precise distances, they are 53 miles and really difficult to get to. <laughs> Telford is a mile further and it's really easy. Really easy. Yeah. It's a single road. The logic, the logic in that has yeah. something to do with your feeling towards the Dingles. Um, yeah, there's a certain, uh, um, certain um, wholesale disgust about them. Yeah. Right, okay. okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you can go by train should you wish. As you can, yes. the Wolfronians. But anyway, carry on. Oh, it's a bit of a chore. I don't think you get back at night. But you would, you certainly tell for sort of problem. I didn't say anything about getting, getting back. back. You want to stay there. No. Enjoy the place so much. No. You want to stay there. Okay. Yeah, 90 minutes by train. You've got to change at Shrewsbury. Ah, that's a drawback. Yeah. You've actually got to stop in Shrewsbury. Now, who in their right mind would want to stop in Shrewsbury, oh, either yeah. on a train or right. by any other form of transport? Right, okay. right. There's worse places, but okay. Um, if you come in by train, then near the railway station is a Weatherspoons called the William Withering. 
I wonder if he's named after. Couldn't we have a William Withering stand in their ground as well? Then they could be the full set of four sides. It's a flattering name, is it, William? It is really, yeah. There you go. So there you go, quick run down to what's, what joys you can expect to find in Telford. I'm looking forward to that one because it's the first big test it for is. us, I think. Yeah. Uh, playing the step suit, two side, mm -hmm. although not a particularly uh, strong. Uh, at well, I don't know. Yeah, they might, I, uh, they might have some Irish investment. A uh, couple I, of points of Guinness by the time we play them. Um, they um, did rely heavily, I think, on the goals of Lee Hughes in the second half of the season. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Of course, he's gone now. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, that's the end of that one. That's a guide to Telford, and that match is taking place on Saturday, the 22nd of July, with a 3 p.m. kickoff. Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls, every game, every week. OK, and our fifth and final pre-season friendly is against Gloucester City. That's going to take place on Monday. Monday, yes. the 31st of July, 7.45 p.m. kickoff. Uh, that should be a quite interesting one for us because it's going back to Evesham. Yes. This is what we were saying about the fact that we're the only, uh, the only city club of the three, the three counties yeah. that actually play at home. Um, at yeah. Home. Yeah. I mean, okay. We really enjoyed our visit to Evesham, but I wasn't Not that really, much. I Not really didn't want to go back. No. Quite quite that soon but hey you know look at the blessings it's a comfortable ground car parking on the spot easy to get to close yeah close you know imagine you know our numbers will be quite small so everybody will get in the bar well it's you know, a shame of that yeah i mean this is a, this is the second of the big ones really before we look at the home matches yeah um which will uh, will presumably be at a higher level. Well, not necessarily a high level again. I mean, we're, we're stepping up in standard again. Yeah. Uh, same level as Telford, but they finished. Uh, They're in a better a, side, aren't better, they? Well, they were last year. Yeah. But um, some of our players could get a bit confused. I think there's going to be confusion all around. Isn't it? It'd be quite comical if someone is around with a camera. We got our, our two Evesham boys. They've been wanting to go in the Evesham dressing room because that's all we've right. really gone. Alex Harris will be looking for our dressing room because that's where he's been and uh, and Jack Damon will be looking for Gloucesters well, <laughs> interesting. interesting yeah, yeah. They, I didn't realise till I looked at the notes we've got here the Gloucester have been without the ground for a decade yeah. now yeah. although there are rumours now of a return to the uh, the city, but that's not going to take place for a couple of years they're, well it? they're not far away I believe they got they got planning permission last season have they got money? Well, that's, that's, surprise, it. Isn't it, really? that's the that's, that's the problem, isn't it? Really. Well, that's what's bankrupt Worcester, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Yeah. They got money for their old ground, yeah. and then they blown it all on being nomadic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, just have, we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. And it's a strange one for Gloucester because obviously they finished tenth last year in National League North. Well, that's not bad, is it? And it, it's very impressive. And because therefore, they immediately got moved to National, National League, League South. South. Yeah. <laughs> and that's cost them some players. It, well, yes, it would uh, do. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah. Alex Harris has yeah. gone to them because yeah. their goalkeeper, who they wanted to keep, and lives in Wor and lives in Worcester, uh, wants to stay on the northern edge of yeah. things, and therefore is not willing to do the travel. South. I am. Um, I, I actually read it even further. North. He lives in Birmingham, I believe. Jasbir Singh. Oh right. Yeah. So well, that, that's sort of yeah. understandable. Well, no, that's his fault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we fault. don't. Uh, no allowances, yeah. just be, you made yeah. the, you made the wrong decision, mate, yeah. about where to live. I mean, oh, exactly. or about which club to play I mean, for. You and I are a mature generation, Frank, and we we We're remember the, a bit, yeah. yeah. We remember the days when Gloucester were the biggest club in Gloucestershire by a streak. Uh, well, uh, yeah, before the rise of Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and before that, oh. yeah. Well, very few people still have. No, no. Yeah. I feel really sorry for a lot of clubs in League Two next season. They'll get lost. <laughs> Going up that hill, how do they all work? Talk about a, a culture shock. I've done it again, haven't I? I've mentioned, I've mentioned a, 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 a football club that I don't like and the word culture in the same sentence. I've done it with Forest Green. I mean, it is, well, anyway, oh enough said. 
We'll yeah, tell well, you more about uh, Forest Green in our next programme. Ooh, we've got to have something to tell you uh, when our home fixtures are announced. No, they're not amongst them. But I will, uh, when we look at our pre-season oh. home friendlies, I will tell you Ooh. more. You little tease, Frank. Uh, uh, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it close by, yeah. you know. Well, we were, you know, speculating, thinking 1970s Gloucester City were the club in Gloucester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the county's got two league clubs, and neither of which is Gloucester. Yeah. So, you know, they are very much third billing. For a city yeah. that big, 128,000, twice people. the size of Hereford. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not far short of places like Middlesbrough, you know, and Ipswich, it's not that, in terms of size. And you do right. wonder, they've been away from you for 10 years, you know, how are they, are they ever going to be on a May Well, uh, there are going to be 128,000 people who have forgotten what they, are, what they look like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, indeed, and of course there's, there's the uh, people with odd shaped balls that dominates the town at the moment, so that's well, not a yeah, problem. Yeah. So, um, well, one other point I'd just like to throw in, really, because their season starts before ours, this is going to be the Tigers' last friendly, as friendly right. as seven. So they are going to be more advanced in and than us in their match fitness. Yeah. yeah. So you know, if they start running away from us in the last twenty minutes, basically that's it, guys. You know, because they are so much more down the line than we are. Absolutely. Right. Well, that's um, that's a little guide to them. Um, nothing much about um, about local. Well, we know Evesham, don't we? In the the ground. Yeah, the, it's, it's a night game, so you know. No, no pubs nearby. No, there's. No there isn't a pub no. within a mile. No. You've got to go in the town centre. It's a night game and this you take the afternoon off. You're not going to do it, are you? Bar at the ground. Bar yeah, the ground. Was, there was. And that's right. And if you want to stop on the way back in uh, Pershaw, that's oh, oh. there's lots of good places. Oh, there, yes, yeah. definitely. As we did last time. Keith and I, we'd stopped at a lovely little pub in Pershaw. And uh, that's a thing. But anyway, um, yeah. that's the last of our away games that uh, we're willing to tell you about. I am privy to some information about about other games that are going to be taking place but uh, as it hasn't been announced by the club yet I won't let you into the secret <laughs> well no secret it's, uh, there are there are home fixtures at the moment only Stourbridge at home on August the 5th has been confirmed but there will be other home games including the County Cup Challenge match you don't know who that's against yet and at least one other and the possibility of another away game uh, but that away game will not be a million miles away from the ground okay. that's all I'm going to tell you at the moment very crowded, this yes. yes it is so that's our guide to the five definite away games if you want more details about travelling please do go to the Hereford Away Days Facebook page I'm sure that um, uh, details about those will be up soon I know the Wolfrinians one is already there it has been for a week now you can sign up and also how you can get membership it's free membership this year free membership to Hereford Away Days so I think you'll, you have to be a member to travel now um, but anyway details from Reg on his site it's been lovely doing this for you again and the next time we catch up with you will be on our pre-season guide to the remaining matches most of which will be at Edgar Street exactly. thanks very much for listening Have catch, a good one. catch up with you soon This is Radio Hereford FC, the home of the Bulls. Match Day Live.